okay. Yeah. Uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter one. Uh, I'm just reading verses one to five. Um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was in the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And uh, clearly that is very significant in Jewish culture, in that it, the day starts for them in the evening and then moves to the day. Uh, probably not thought too, too much about that in the past, but basically if you, when you read scriptures, you can see so many things, uh, particularly Jesus' crucifixion, where things start, start in the darkest part of the day and then you move into the light. And uh, that, that may be common knowledge to you. Whereas we tend to think things, our, our, our natural rhythm in the Western world particularly is that uh, we start the day in the light and we go to the evening. So we, we do it in reverse to God's order. We, we, uh, we, we, we think of the light and, and, and then the darkness. We think of moving from health to sickness. Whereas God's way is to move from sickness to health. Uh, it's completely mm -hmm. reverse order. Um, and consequently, we know that the Jewish people always start their day in the evening, even the Passover, uh, the first Passover. It, it, and the night of the plague, they, they were all in their house in the dark. They celebrated the Passover meal while the plague passed by. And, and they came out in, into the light of salvation from death. Um, Perhaps we should have done that during the pandemic, but uh, I think many people did because we we're still here. Thank goodness. And uh, then I, I, I was reading from Luke, Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter twenty-two. Um, this is what I read on on Sunday, um, twenty-two verses uh, forty-four to uh, forty-six. Now it was about the sixth hour. And there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Even when it wasn't meant to be dark at the time of day, I think God organized creation to have the darkness around Jesus's death because it was a very dark moment. In, in many ways, it, it was the start of a new era, the start of a new day, because obviously Jesus rose in the morning and uh, the whole of history changed from that point onwards. And uh, it, just looking through some of the events in scripture that Jesus did uh, in the evening as part of his no normal cycle of things, you know, he walked on the water in the dark and it was probably a glowing light. Uh, so that the disciples were all in despair and panic in the boat uh, and then the light comes along so it was moving from darkness to light uh, he met well nathaniel came to meet him in the dark and nathaniel came to an understanding of who jesus was uh, and that was a new new day for him but uh, jesus ate the last supper with his disciples obviously in the evening in the dark uh, and he was betrayed in the dark and he died in the dark and all of that is very significant in moving into something, into the new day uh, of what God has planned for us. And just thinking that Jesus died in the dark, but he actually rose into glory and back into, back into the light of glory. And that, that was a new day. He died uh, rejected by hundreds, but he, he, he rose and lives today accepted by millions he uh, he died in in shame but was glorified you know he moved from the darkness of shame to the to the glory of being back with his father he, he died uh, alone in in many senses but then he came back into the full fullness of his place with his father he, he came into the light of that and he came into the light of a family 
uh, uh, that he now has of all the sons and daughters that he has in, in Jesus uh, Jesus Christ who believe in him. So, so he actually models the way that we should be living our life, moving from always from darkness to light rather than from light to darkness. And uh, that, that that's incredible because we are we are uh, set free from the darkness of sin and born into the kingdom of light. And uh, just recently, we've been looking at church at uh, being the light of the world. Um, so we've got to leave all that dark side aside and, and come into who, who we are. Um, you know, we, we very often can live in the darkness of weakness, but that may be the start of a Jewish day. But the, the end of the Jewish day and the end of our day is one of the light of strength. So we move from the darkness of weakness to one of strength. We, we move from the darkness of sickness into one of healing. We move from the darkness of death into, eter into the light of eternal life. We move from the darkness of tears into the morning of joy. Uh, we know that psalm so well, don't we? That uh, uh, joy, uh, tears may last for the, the, the night, but joy will come in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, we, we move from the darkness of defeat into the light of victory. And that's so uh, apparent so often in, in some of the Old Testament stories. We, we move from the darkness of despair into the light of hope. And we move from the darkness of guilt as uh, was being sung there into the light of innocence. It's a, an incredible transition from the things that to us appear dark but it, it's the evening before the, the light comes. And uh, that should give us great hope that every, what we may consider a dark moment is just the start of a new day of something a lot brighter to come. And uh, that, that was what really captured me, you know, the, the whole thought of every day, uh, I start, I may start with a negative or a dark thing, but I'm always moving into something light and hopeful and joyful uh, because of the work of the cross, the power of the cross and, and, and Jesus just uh, painting that picture uh, right from the, the Old Testament, even into his death on the cross. There's always a transition. Uh, all dark things are the start of the day, but the end of the day is always one of, of uh, great hope and uh, light. So that was very short. But uh, that, that's what's been uh, on my mind for the last few days. And, and just looking back over life and seeing that there's always been those transitions. And uh, then deciding that I need to stop looking at uh, the darkness as a negative because it's actually the transition into something uh, incredible. So from the darkness of uh, pandemic, from the darkness of uh, almost imprisonment in our homes and behind face masks, there is a such a great freedom, a, a light of freedom and uh, revival and the gospel being proclaimed that's in its dawn at this moment in time. And uh, the ultimate thing will be Jesus's return. So uh, I'm, I'm just so glad that we're in starting into a new era and uh, a new thing as to what God is doing, because we've been through some dark things, even even our politics at the moment, they, they appear very dark. But the beauty is there's going to be a better light at the end of things. Um, so we have hope. Amen. <laughs>